Welcome to another example from chapter 8. And in this situation, as we start to look at it, we want to be thinking about what kind of physics we'll be applying in this situation. So the carts shown, they collide. So that's going to be step one. The collision happens, and then they roll uphill. And then stuff happens. So step two is going to be they go uphill and it'll be an energy problem. This is a two-step problem. And just like the previous example and the upcoming example, there are two separate steps that have to be done in the right order. And we have to use the end of step one as the start of step two. So we'll see how that works in this problem and in the next one. All right, so step one is the collision. And any collision is going to involve momentum conservation. All right, so in our momentum problems, we've been training ourselves to label all of the given information so that we know what's going on. So if we read left to right, the first mass we get to is three kilograms. The second mass we get to is four kilograms. That first mass is moving positive six meters per second. And that second mass is at rest. Now they stick together. So the final velocity of number one is going to be equal to the final velocity of number two, and it's going to be equal to just a generic final velocity for step one specifically. So we should write down momentum conservation, and that should be something that we're getting used to doing for all of our collisions. So we'll write it down before we plug anything in, being careful to being to be thinking about the subscripts before stuff is on the left, after stuff is on the right, two different masses. And now we can just plug stuff in from our nice list that we made. Three times six plus four times zero is equal to three V final plus four V final. So 18 is equal to seven V final divide by seven. And we get that our velocity at the bottom of the hill, so the end of step one and the start of step two, is 2.57 meters per second, and that's at the bottom of the hill. So at bottom of hill. And that becomes the start of step two. So step two is an energy problem, so we really should be acting, the going through the full energy process. And that starts with a picture, with before and after. So before, 3 plus 4 is 7 kilograms. We have this 7 kilogram con uh, combination moving at the bottom of the hill at 2.57 meters per second. It will roll up the hill, still being the same mass, and we have a final velocity over there. So... We want to draw our before situation. This is really just one block that is 7 kilograms total. And our after situation. That way we can write out all the terms that we have the way that we do in a standard energy problem. We think about before and after. All right, so the kinetic energy question is, are we moving? At the beginning of step two, we are moving because we're moving at 2.57 meters per second. At the end of the problem, we are moving. The reason we know that is because we're asking specifically to find that speed. So one half mv, and I'm going to call it final, final, just so that we know for sure that it's a different number value than the end of step one. And it's going to be the end of our problem. All right, potential energy from gravity. We ask ourselves, are we higher? At the beginning, we are not. But at the end, we are, mgh. 
And it's useful to train ourselves just to be thinking about all the possibilities. There's no spring here, but it's useful to check. We ask ourselves, is there a work term? We're looking for a push or a pull or air resistance or friction, anything that is a force we haven't accounted for. And there's nothing here that we're um, told about. All right, so when we think about our energy before, plus work added equals energy after equation. We want to make sure that we recognize that the steps of writing it out, it might feel like it takes time, but the whole point, the whole point of every example that we do is to go through the full process to train our brain that all of these steps are important so that at test time, we can remember as many of them as we can because we've done every single step every single time. All right, so the energy before is one half mv squared plus zero plus zero. The work added, because we said no, we can write zero. And the energy after, we have one half mv final, final squared plus mgh plus zero. All right. Clearly, we're running out of space, so I'm going to scroll down the page. Now we can plug in our numbers. So, one half, the total mass is seven. The V that we're using here is the one at the bottom of the hill, so that's 2.57. That velocity will be squared. That's it for the left because everything else is zero. On the right, we have one half times 7, times that unknown final, final velocity squared, plus mass, which is 7, times g, which is 9.8, times height, and that 20 centimeters, the height, we have to divide by 100, that's 0 0.20 meters. So 0.2. All right. So on the left, we have... 23.1 joules, and on the right, this first term, 1 half times 7 is 3.5 V final, final squared. This term here in our calculators, we get 13.7, so we can subtract 13.7 from both sides. All right, I'm going to move over here for space. So on the left now, we have 9.4. And that's equal to 3.5 V final, final squared. So we can divide both sides by 3.5. And we can take the square root of both sides so that instead of V final squared, we have just V. And we get our final number answer, which is 1.64, 1.64 meters per second. It is always good to check to see if that seems reasonable to us. At the bottom of the hill, we were moving at 2.57 meters per second. We went uphill, so we lost a little bit of our speed because we put that energy into gravitational potential energy. So it should make sense to us that at the top of the hill, we are moving a little bit slower. So that seems reasonable. Our step six check of does it make sense seems to fit here. If we look at this problem, the two-step problems are a really, really great test question because it is a relatively small chapter eight kind of problem and a relatively small chapter seven kind of problem put together in a way that we have to understand what we're doing in order to get it right. So the whole point of this class is to build critical thinking skills, to build problem solving skills, and the more setup that you do and writing out equations before you plug stuff in, the better practice you're actually going to have so that when there are new situations to deal with, you're prepared for them. I will see you in the next example.